Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to part 2 of Amblyopia. In our previous video, we have studied about the basics of Amblyopia and what are the causes of Amblyopia. Here in this video, we shall be studying about how do we treat Amblyopia. So there are four, there are three basic aims for the treatment of Amblyopia. The first aim is treating the cause of amblyopia. The second aim is to correct any significant refractive error. Now in my previous video, I already told you that the amblyopia uh, is basically uh, happens because of multiple reasons based on which we are dividing it into refractive, visual deprivation amblyopia, strabismic amblyopia, organic amblyopia and so on and so forth. So, as we know, there's an entity called refractive amblyopia in which the amblyopia occurs secondary to refractive errors. So it is quite obvious that we will try to correct any significant refractive errors. Now the third aim is, which is the most important aim in the treatment of amblyopia is to force the use of amblyopic eye by limiting the use of better eye. Now in amblyopia, we know that the amblyopic eye is also called a lazy eye and the normal eye is actually compensating for the work that the lazy eye is not doing. So in amblyopia, we try to use the uh, lazy eye or the amblyopic eye more by limiting the use of this better eye. And how do we do that? We shall see that in a while. The first aim, as I told you, is the treatment of the underlying cause of amblyopia. So if the, if the cause is a corneal opacity, we will try to remove the corneal opacity. If it's a lenticular opacity like a cataract, cataract surgery should be advocated. And all this is done to prevent the visual deprivation amblyopia. Similarly, in cases which are suffering with squint and strabismus, strabismus surgery might actually help to eliminate the cause of strabismic amblyopia. Then, as I told you, we have to uh, give the patients who are suffering with refractive amblyopia, whether it is an isometropic or isometropic amblyopia, uh, we have to provide them with appropriate refractive correction. And all the guidelines that I have suggested in this video are actually based on the results of the amblyopia treatment study conducted by the PEDIC group, that is a pediatric eye disease investigator group. So under the, under the heading of refractive correction, you can see that we have to correct them as either giving the full correction or under correction. So in case if the child is suffering from astigmatism, myopia and hypermetropia, which is associated with a squint. Okay. And as we all know that hypermetropia is usually associated with an ESO deviation or a esotropia, which is also called the convergent squint. Full correction is given. Similarly, in any kind of anisometropia, which is amblyogenic, in that case also we will give full correction. And the idea of giving full refractive correction in these refractive errors is that we are trying to provide equally clear retinal images to such patients to prevent the amblyopia. However, there is one condition where we do not uh, give total correction of the refractive error. That means we try to undercorrect certain patients. This is done when the patient has hypermetropia alone without any squint or without any esotropia. Okay, and this undercorrection is not done more than 1.5 diopter spherical equivalent. Okay, and uh, so what is meant by undercorrection is that so suppose a patient is actually having an error of about 5 diopters hypermetropia. Okay, and this patient we are going to ask two questions is the patient suffering from esotropia? or the patient does not have esotropia okay so if the patient is suffering from esotropia we will prescribe the complete plus five diopters to the patient however if the patient is not having esotropia then we are going to undercorrect this by uh, 1.5 diopters so this comes to about 3.5 diopters okay so not more than this uh, we we should not decrease the error by more than 1.5 so plus 1.5 diopter spherical equivalent under correction is enough for such patients now the question is why do we undercorrect hypermetropia in such uh, patients the reason is very simple hypermetropia is treated basically with convex lenses and as you all know that our convex lenses are plus 
lenses okay now there's a principle uh, in strabismus that the convex lenses uh, which are plus lenses they basically relax the accommodation of the patient so what is meant by accommodation if you have any doubt in that i would advise you to visit my video on accommodation okay so as i told you that in accommodation the eye tries to increase its power by making the lens more fatter right so what we are doing in hypermetropia is we are actually giving them plus correction so we are actually adding on to the existing power of the eye and therefore when such convex lenses or plus lenses are prescribed the patient's accommodation will actually uh, um, get relaxed and the patient will not use much of accommodation this leads to blurring of vision at near and the child will use less accommodation and such a uh, less accommodation and less near work can aggravate amblyopia so using plus lenses in hypermetropes can actually aggravate amblyopia and that is the reason why we basically try to under correct such patients provided they don't have any squint once there is a squint and we know that it is actually uh, accommodative esotropia we have to prescribe full correction in such hypermetropes so i hope that is clear so all this is actually based on the work of pedic studies and uh, uh, they saw that basically two amblyopia treatment uh, studies were there and they actually saw that in 3 to 7 years of age group okay refractive correction alone led to the improvement of visual equity by three lines okay and also there was about 25 to 30 Three percent of cases in which there was resolution of amblyopia. Also, so what is meant by resolution of amblyopia? Resolution of amblyopia or amblyopia is said to be treated or resolved when the visual equity will become equal in both eyes. So the right eye visual equity and left eye visual equity will become equal or the visual equity is within one line of the sa sound eye so if this is 6 by 9 this is 6 by 12 like that okay so it is coming closer to this um this eye's visual equity by one line so that is called resolution of amblyopia and they found that just by correcting the refractive error amblyopia can also be resolved in about 25 to 33% of the cases similarly for bilateral refractive amblyopia also they saw that uh, when we correct such patients with appropriate refractive corrections and this was conducted in 3 to 10 years of age the binocular visual equity improved improved by approximately four lines so refractive correction is really important next the third aim of treatment as i told you is limiting the use of better eye so how do we limit the use of better eye okay when so and moreover this is actually done when the patients are not responding to refractive correction alone so first we try the refractive correction and then when the patients do not respond to the refractive correction alone or the visual equity has stopped to improve then the amblyopic eye can be actually forced to fixate by limiting the use of better eye in the following ways so these ways are either we can try the occlusion therapy that is patching or there could be pharmacological penalization that we can do which is very similar to patching but we are actually using the drugs here and the third is the bangerters filters So let us look uh, at them one by one. So what is meant by patching? So you can see this child over here who is wearing a patch. So patches is nothing but we are going to occlude the sound eye or the better eye. So if this eye is amblyopic, amblyopic, we are going to patch the other sound eye or the better eye in this. patient so occlusion of the sound eye can be done with adhesive patches so you get this patches which come as stickers with glue so such adhesive patches are available and similarly you have certain spectacle mounted occluders also in which there will be a cloth patch which can be worn on the spectacles so the main principle of patching is to obligate the use of amblyopic eye we want the lazy eye to do some work So before I uh, describe to you the duration of patching and the effectiveness of patching uh, you should know the classification of amblyopia based upon the severity So based on severity there is mild amblyopia moderate and severe amblyopia so mild is 6 by 9 to 612 moderate is 612 to 624 and severe amblyopia is even worse than 6 by 24 
so coming to for how long are you going to patch the patient that is the patching duration so this is also based on the pedic study which found out that in moderate amblyopia that is visual equity 612 to 624 two hours of patching was as effective as six hours of daily patching right so even if you patch the child for two hours or you patch for child the patch the child for six hours both of them had equal uh, visual equity improvement and for severe amblyopia that is from uh, worse than 624 the six hours of daily patching was as effective as 24 hours or full-time daily patching right so this was uh, concluded in the two studies similarly in cases of residual amblyopia that means the patients who were actually treated with two hours of patching and they were followed for eight to twelve weeks and still they had some amblyopic error some uh, some amount of amblyopia they noticed that once you increase the duration from two hours to six hours it led to further improvement in about 40 percent of the children okay so now what is the age group for which uh, the patching actually works so patching was tried in 3 to 7 years 7 to 12 years and 13 to 17 years of age and it was seen that it was most effective in this age group that is 3 to 7 years of age and the improvement was seen in about 93 percent of the patients whereas you can still try the treatment in 13 to 17 years age group also as there was improvement chances seen in about 25 percent of the uh, kids so there are certain problems with patching patching might not be so uh, it might not be so cosmetically appealing to the child and they might be teased at school and patching actually requires persistent encouragement both by the healthcare uh, personnel the doctors at the same time the parents also need to be motivated themselves and they have to motivate the child to use the patch consistently and it causes itching because of the uh, glue which is present in the adhesive patches and the main problem which lies is the compliance so to deal with such uh, certain uh, problems of compliance in the patching uh, treatment protocol we have another uh, way of treating amblyopia and that is the pharmacological penalization pharmacological penalization is very similar to patching in which we try to actually decrease the function of the good eye by instilling certain topical cycloplegic agents that is the atropine sulfate one person drops into the good eye of the child with amblyopia so in such a way what happens is that the good eye will undergo dilatation and the visual equity of the good eye will actually go down and the child will be forced to use the amblyopic eye so this is a principle so again in the studies what they found was in moderate amblyopia when the one drop of one person atropine was instilled every day there was an improvement which was similar to the six hours of daily patching improvement in these kids from three to seven years of age similarly in severe amblyopia they noticed that even once uh, in a week if they administered one drop of one person atropine it led to significant visual improvement even from seven to twelve years of age so what does this tell us it tells us that for pharmacological penalization even if one drop can be instilled in one week that means particularly on weekends either on saturday or sunday then patient will have improvement in his visual equity from uh, such amblyopic uh, uh, such amblyopic kids might have improvement with pharmacological penalization coming to the side effects of this pharmacological penalization since we are using an anticholinergic agent it can cause dryness of the mouth so salivation can decrease so there can be dryness of the mouth the lacrimation will also decrease and there will be uh, blurring of the vision and there will be dryness of the eye along with that atropine can cause fever and it can has uh, effect it can have effect on the uh, gastrointestinal tract so there can be gi upset okay at the same time there can be effect on the central nervous system so certain kids might uh, suffer with confusion drowsiness dizziness unusual behavior and irritability so it is the side effects which limit the use of uh, pharmacological penalization and patching is done now if both of these don't work we can again uh, use the banjeter filters as an add-on therapy so this banjeter filter is nothing but it's a translucent filter that is applied to the good eye 
to limit its use and the child is forced to use the lazy eye as you can see over here and but however this is prescribed for full time wear in the amblyopia tr treatment now different densities of filters are available and uh, they can produce different degrees of defocus for the better eye so ultimately if you know all these three uh, main aims how do you approach uh, in treating a patient with amblyopia so first diagnosis is very important and we need to find out whether it is refractive amblyopia strabismic amblyopia or is it visual deprivation amblyopia and then you try to treat the cause basically then if it is refractive most probably we have to provide most commonly we provide refractive correction after cycloplegia and the child needs to be followed up for 6 to 8 weeks okay and after follow up 6 to 8 weeks if there's an improvement okay we will continue the spectacles and follow up continue following up the child for the refractive error correction okay however if there is no improvement what do we do next if there is no improvement with the refractive correction we can add patching and patching is usually started for two hours daily patching however in, uh, in severe amblyopia you can go on to six hours of daily patching also okay if uh, the patching is not working okay then what do we do we will increase the patching duration to six hours and along with patching we can add the atropin on the weekend right along with the patching now sometimes the, the patching might actually be a problem for the patient and the compliance to the patching treatment might be poor for such patient the patients can be started started with weekly once atropine if the patient can accept the atropine and he's fine and improving with atropine atropine can be continued however if there's any problem and the patient does not improve with atropine then we can consider again patching or it can we can use the uh, uh, this button band inter filters so again if there is no improvement with all these three things also then you have to look out for any organic causes of amblyopia so this was about the treatment approach and how do we treat amblyopia i hope it was useful if it was kindly share the knowledge and subscribe to the channel thank you and have a nice day